Well, it looks like we have another Jeep project on the go here. So this is a, uh, I think it's a Lyland aftermarket fuel tank for the Jeep WK with a 3 liter diesel. So for whatever reason, Mopar went completely against what they normally do and put a, a steel tank in their diesel when their Cummins trucks have had uh, plastic tanks in them forever. So anyway, mine rotted out. It rotted out. Uh, I have a 2008 and it's just the end of 2022 right now. So what happened with me was I had some oil dripping off the bottom of my Jeep so I took it to a car wash to clean it off so it wouldn't dirty the driveway and lo and behold two days later my fuel tank failed. So this is a, a steel tank. When you get it it's going to come obviously in a big cardboard box. I've got some RTV because I want to glue some uh, rubber pads or something to the tank so it doesn't rub on the uh, skid plate. So this just sits in a, a cradle. There's no straps for this tank. And then it comes with a new locking ring and a, uh, a vent extension. So you'll see the original tank has a long vent which is a smaller line and this one just to make it fit in the box they have a separate vent. It, that nub ridge there is for a quick connect and then the, the bare line kind of extends onto here. I don't know why they wouldn't have put a little nipple on the end of it or whatever. Looking inside the tank there's no baffles whatsoever but there are uh, there's some kind of rollover check valve in there and then if you feel around you could feel there's a hose that goes back to here and there's a T. I don't know what's going on there exactly but the uh, fuel kind of rolls around I guess in there without the baffles. There's a check valve on the inlet. Get your eyeballs on that or not. No, it doesn't look like we'll be able to show it to you. But there's just a check. So I'll pull this out of the box. We could take a look at it. And uh, we'll go outside and see what's going on there. Alright, so that's the two line fittings here. So, I don't know if you can see in there. But there's just a little flapper in there to keep the uh, fuel from sloshing up. The fuel neck when you would accelerate, that's the back that faces into the wheel well. Mine actually rotted out at the front where the front driver's side wheel throws dirt up onto the tank. Um, to do this job, you're going to need lots of pails. Pails are the cheapest way to manage your diesel fuel. I've got like some pail opening tool. We'll see if that helps at all. And uh, like I said, we'll go take a look outside and see what's going on. Kind of mixed about the weather here. So. It just had to happen to fail right before the winter and then it snowed. So that's great. And then hopefully the diesel comes out of my interlocking driveway. So I guess we'll find out about that in a few months. Alright, so this is where we're at. Sometimes the skid plate completely rots out, falls apart, but that hasn't happened on mine. I have a little bit of cleaning I gotta do there, but I'll, I'll be okay. Get the junk out of there. So that would be the rear where I'm looking at right now. This was the hardest bolt to remove. They're all 18 millimeter, but that one being in the wheel well, it was uh, pretty crusty. Mine started to rot out at the front. And as I was loosening the uh, skid plate, it started to leak out even more. So I'll talk about how to empty the tank here in a second. So you can see the two tanks kind of side by side. Pretty similar contraptions. The, uh, Quick disconnects are probably the hardest thing to work on. I guess they're quick connects, not quick disconnects, depending <laughs> who you are. So uh, this will be attached up on your chassis. And it's the same as this connector here. So what you need to do is you push out that tab and you push down and pop it out. The one you're laying on your back in the dark, it may not be so obvious that that's how it works. On the body there's two of these connectors with mine. One of them had a, a red locking tab but you just take some pliers and you squish them down and pull them off and you'll be okay. 
You see the fuel tank, the pump. So this has got a Bosch in it. I imagine it's original. Imagine that's original as well. The previous owner didn't say anything about changing it. So like I said, the uh, vent is a little bit different, but they give you a solution for that. So I have to sand the paint off of the ground here so I can get that to connect. So you see the rubber pieces on this tank that don't exist on here. It looks like that thing might be attached to the tank. I don't know if you're supposed to move it over, I guess so. So I yank that off and glue that to the other tank. To empty the tank, I was trying to pour it into my drain pan, but I couldn't. So I just took a flat screwdriver and hammered a hole into the side of the tank so I could pour it out. Because uh, after emptying it, I still had about uh, 10 liters or half a pail of fuel in it. Um, that's the back here. So that's like the, the front. That's the road side. So the tire throwing stuff up on the tank. Ate it up. No big surprise. See the rubber straps on here. Luckily they seem pliable enough I can yank them off and glue them back on. I was afraid that below freezing they might not play very nice. Got the same little hanging gadgets on there. I haven't confirmed if this tank is actually smaller or not. On the specs it is, but I just don't know if they're confused between American and Imperial gallons or if the liters are the same or what the situation is. But supposedly this is like a, a gallon smaller or something, which is unfortunate. It's one of the reasons you buy the diesel so you can go further. So for tools, use the impact gun only for the one in the wheel well with some extensions, 18 millimeter. I just use this guy for the rest of them. So you can see the fasteners there. They've got a, uh, a gear clamp for whatever reason for the filler neck. It's not a constant pressure clamp for some reason. Then the, uh, the vent is a quick connect or quick disconnect. And then this is what I use to squeeze the tabs. Right. So they would be over here. One of them had a red thing on it. Then on the vehicle side I marked it. I put a zip tie on that line so I could match them up because I wasn't sure if there's any way of knowing which one is which so you can just mark them with zip ties or tape or something so you know what they are. But with these, if you wanted to disconnect it, you would just squeeze that piece in. Then we'll have to get that ring off, but we don't need to reuse it, which is good. And it came with a new O-ring, which is good. Don't need to take any of that stuff off in my opinion, but so I'll start switching this uh, plastic stuff over, clean the tank, and then we'll get going on something else. All right, I realized my camera wasn't on automatic earlier. So anyway, I got the uh, foam stuff transferred over. I just used that black uh, Permatex on there. That patch there, you don't switch it over. The tank is molded to have that feature, but you do need to remove the uh, little foam strip over and you can glue it on. Not much more to say about that, I don't think. This side of the tank is quite a bit worse. I would say that that's where it had failed. For fuel collection, I took the three pails here up to about three quarters full. They're up to maybe about there. You wouldn't want to go any higher because like, good luck pouring it. I had to use a, a funnel to put it into this thing and that's a, a feed on its own. Somehow I got to pay, pour these pails into that to fill up the Jeep. But they're all a little bit dirty. I should have had the uh, strainer in here, but I didn't. So the dirt went into the pails. So, so be it. Actually, where did that happen? Yeah, I, I'll explain how I pumped out the tank. Part of it is my fault, but when I poured uh, the remainder of the tank into here after I punched a hole in it. If I had the screen 
I wouldn't have as much dirt in this uh, jerry can here. Then I've got just a, a catch can here. You could see it caught stuff. Then I, I threw any of the oily snow in there and let it melt as well. Back to the vehicle. So this vehicle has got, I think, about a two inch lift on it. Then it's got JK tires on or something. I don't know. So they're like an inch taller as well. So it's about a three inch lift on this vehicle. If you had a stock vehicle, you probably need to jack up the body to get the uh, tank out. I don't think it would fit just sitting flat on the ground. Got another oil catch can here and some oil absorbent. I need to scoop that up pretty soon. Two lines are right here. You can see I marked the one with the zip tie to match the one with the red keeper. It's easy enough access to get everything in there. And to pump out the tank, what I did was I went to the fuel filter and the smaller line, you pull that line off the fuel filter and you put another rubber line on the fuel filter on the left hand fitting and I just ran it into my pail. Then I cycled the key and the pump runs for about 30 seconds. So I don't know, if you cycle the key about five times, you get about a pail worth of fuel. So I just had pails of fuel in front of the vehicle and pumped it out that way. And like I said, there was still like a 10 liters left over on here. And uh, yeah, so being that these things are like environmental disasters, I was leaking diesel all over the parking lot. And the reason I was washing it was because this thing was oozing oil all over the head and it was dripping onto the ground. Then I don't know if you'd be able to see it or not, but I got two leaking fuel injectors. Yeah, you probably can't see it, but there are two leaking on here. I replaced the ones on the other side. The injector seals probably a year and a half ago. So that's great. This thing's a bit of a, a dirty vehicle, but so be it. So I guess at this point, I have an ATV jack. I'll take a quick look at that. And then I'm gonna just clean this up and shove the tank back in. There's really not much to see. There's another guy that made a more detailed video that I can link to. If you want to see how to disconnect the uh, hose lines and stuff. Yeah, so I've got a, an ATV jack here that I'm going to use to lift the tank in. The tank is light. The skid plate is quite heavy. So uh, yeah, I'll use that to get that back in. As I thought, so there are some baffles in the uh, original tank that are not in the replacement. So there's one at the back on the bottom. And then there's uh, more on top towards the front of the vehicle. I hope you can see in there. I can't see in there. Yeah, it looks like there's a flap on there. And you can see how the quick connect grabs onto this fitting here. It seems like that's plastic, so there must be a, some kind of push-on connection there that we don't need to worry about. So, I noticed that uh, when you're putting the fuel pump back in, it's like rigidly pushed against the bottom of the tank. There's some springs here. Mine's not super clean, but it is going back in. Ended up using this jack instead. So the tank is in. I put in about 15 liters of fuel by the looks of it. So now I've got to cycle the key a couple times and see if it's going to start. So I just let the pump circulate. And here, third one. There, I'd say that's enough, not enough fuel. I'll have to get another pail in there. Got another can in here. I hear a bit of gurgling. 
It's probably just clearing the lines up to the filter and back. That's the intent. Is to just circle the fuel through a couple times. I had CAA put a battery in this last year, which is equivalent to AAA. For some reason, I put the, the gas size battery in this thing, so it's a bit small. I've got to get that resolved. Alright, we're back. Down for about a week. It took me about an hour and a bit to get the one tank out. An hour and a bit to get the other one back in, I believe. I don't see any fuel pouring out of it. Alright. So that's pretty much the job. Hope you can hear the leaking injector there. I can hear it with the kick there. Lost the uh, liner for the hood. And uh, so far it hasn't burned any paint off the hood yet. It's been off for about a year. No uh, cylinder covers or anything. You can reduce some weight there if you want. It's quite a bit louder without the cylinder covers and the hood cover. Like when you're driving up the road, everyone lines up at the bus stop. They think the bus is coming. And it's just uh, the five-seater bus. So, it's been a while since I made a video. Hope you found this interesting. Thanks for watching.